Hey everyone, we're back in the shop working on the Dark Air 1 prototype, which is an aircraft we're specifically engineering for high-speed long-range flight. We've been documenting the process of building this aircraft on this channel, but lately we've been kind of quiet, mainly because we've been busy, but also because we've been working on kind of a secret project in the background. If you stick around to the end of this video, we'll tell you more about that, but our main focus lately has been getting to the first engine start. There are a whole bunch of small tasks that the first engine start depends on, which we have to finish first. We're gonna talk through those tasks. Let's get into it. Yeah. are going to be for making these little covers that are related to the landing gear. Don't worry about exactly where they go, we'll explain that later. We have the airframe sitting inverted to finish up some tasks and it, as long as it was in this orientation I wanted to show you some work we've been doing with the landing gear. I have one of the main landing gear struts installed and in the retracted position. I don't think we've shown them quite fully retracted before so that's what this looks like and I'll show you how it extends like this. What we've done recently with the main landing gear is installed the locks so that allows the gear to lock up and down and I'll show you that actuating right now as it extends into the fully extended position. You hear that little click? It's in the down lock position now. The way that works, this is the, uh, the drag link mount and the upper drag link. So you can see this component. This is the same uh, component for the other side of the aircraft. And the way the gear lock, uh, there's a little latch here. That's what this arm is. It's connected to the latch. So that's unlatched. There's a little hook feature on this latch that interfaces with a pin in the upper drag link. When the gear extends, it automatically latches. That uh, pin catches on the hook. And then to unlock the gear, say you're gonna retract it, there'll be a solenoid that interfaces with this arm and will unlatch it to allow the gear to uh, retract. And then in the up position, there's a second hook feature on this latch which interfaces with the pin on the gear strut so we can lock it in the up position. That way any uh, heavy G loads aren't straining the system. All that G load to try to pull the gear down is going through this little hook here. So then to uh, unlock it from the up lock position, the solenoid would actuate again. So it's one latch for both the down and up to kind of co consolidate and simplify things. And then that would allow the gear to drop and then automatically lock in the down position. If the gear were up, and there were an electrical system failure, we couldn't actuate that solenoid for some reason. There's a mechanical backup interface for this, so basically a cable that attaches to this little arm handle in the cockpit. We can pull that to uh, unlock the gear for an emergency extend, and then they'll automatically fall under gravity and lock into the down lock position. I'll show you how that works one more time. Gear is down and locked, so we can unlock it and retract the gear. I don't have the up lock pin installed, but they would lock in the up position. You can't really see the latch. It's kind of tucked away back in here. Uh, but you just have to imagine they would lock uh, in the up position. And then going down will extend. You can hear it latch. Automatically lock. So nice and solid. We really like that. We didn't initially have these uh, down locks installed. Uh, when we first put the airplane up on the gear and roll it out, the airplane will sit happily on the gear without the locks, but if we were to fire up the engine and try to hit the brakes, the gear could try to fold back. So we really need those locks installed for uh, the first engine start. This was kind of a tricky component to design, this little latch, because there's some intricacies and uh, the geometry really has to be just right and we're also a little bit concerned on the tolerances. We got that figured out though, got it built up and tested. We really like how this works. Uh, we actually developed this design on the nose gear and then copied the architecture into the main gear. So we weren't completely going blind there. Uh, so kind of commonized between the nose gear and the main gear. It's not the exact same hardware, but very similar functionality between the nose and the main as far as the down and up lock goes. So that's the lock mechanism. Another little piece of progress I can show with the main gear is uh, we needed to install brake lines running from the main gear brake calipers up the strut. So there's some little click bond studs here. These are to capture little loop clamps that'll constrain the brake line that runs up the, the gear strut. Let's retract it one more time and show you that. Okay, there we go. That's landing gear progress. We're over at the mill and I've been working on 
these components right here. So I've got one of them. This is a gear. It's going to be used to drive up the main gear on the aircraft. So there's going to be a left and a right. This is the right half that's all finished out. This started out as a gear that we bought off the shelf and we've been removing material from it. So there's material that we do not need. I'll hold that back up there for you. So we don't need the full 360 degrees of gear. We only really need this portion because that's the portion that interfaces with the spur gear right here with the gearbox. That's enough arc length right there to get our gear in the fully extended and the fully retracted position. I've got this one on the table right here. I machined out this little fixture plate that's gonna hold the gear in position, keep it from moving around, and allow me to slot out that last bit of material. So, got that machining to wrap up, and then I wanna show you how this interfaces with the main gear so you have a little bit better idea of how this works with the gear itself. Got my gears all finished up. I have a left half now and a right half. I'm over at the workbench and I wanna see and show you how it interfaces with one of the main gears. So I have a main gear sitting here on the table and let's take a look over at the top portion of it here. We've got this upper trunnion and the gear, this is where the gear is gonna interface with it. So you can see the profile cut out. It drops down on there just like this. And the key here is that it, all of this has to line up so the profile of the gear has to line up with the outside of the trunnion and then our mount holes have to line up and then our center hole for our pivot pin has to line up so the pivot pin is kind of the last key component here that drops through the center just like that and then this would get mounted up into the fuselage and the whole gear itself would pivot at this pivot pin and i'll try to simulate that here so as the torque gets delivered along this gear face, the gear itself will retract and extend right at this point, just like that. So that's the, the gear and the gear interfacing with the main gear. Two other parts that I wanna show you that we wrapped up recently are these carbon fiber covers. They look like this. And they tie into the gear work that I was just talking about. The main gear actually mount very close to the seatback bulkhead to the point where the gear actually punches through the seatback bulkhead and there's a slot that we cut in there. So we still need to protect the gear, protect the occupants. That's what this cover does. The cover mounts onto the seatback, allows the gear to still rotate, but then remain covered. So the way we made these carbon fiber parts is we used a process called wet layup vacuum bag. We normally use infusion uh, some of the larger parts on the aircraft, that's primarily the process that we use. We use different processes depending on the size of the part or how many that we're creating. If you want to learn more about how to create carbon fiber parts like this or any of the other parts on the Dark Arrow One, I'd encourage you to check out our Aerospace Composites course. We'll leave a link in the description to that. Now let's get back to some of the other projects going on with the aircraft. We're here at the firewall to talk about this. This is the firewall connector plate. And what this allows us to do is pass the wiring from the engine to the rest of the plane. It's a connector plate, so that allows us to more easily take the engine on and off the firewall. Uh, just to kind of review the connections we have going on here, we have ECU-1, we have ECU-2. We have this guy here too, which is basically our everything else connector, which is essentially just all of our sensor wiring. We have our power lug, our ground lug, and then we also have this guy here, which you might not have noticed, uh, which is a airline for communicating the air inlet data to our ECU so that they can properly fire the engine cylinders. What's challenging about this connector plate is that we're taking a lot of connections and trying to fit them into kind of a small space claim here. And the other thing too is that we had to make this plate out of fire resistant materials. Up to this point, We've been using a polycarbonate plate for testing purposes, but for our first engine start, we needed to be made of similar materials to the rest of the firewall. So what we did is we made it of a stack of stainless steel, fire blanket, and Soric panel, which again, falls in line with the surrounding material, which is titanium, fire blanket, and then the backing, which is carbon fiber. At this point, we have essentially completed this portion of the firewall so that we can get into our first engine starts. 
We mentioned previously that we're working towards that first engine start. What we're looking at is some of the fuel system hardware that we're gonna be using to do that. I'll break down kind of what we're looking at here. We got this 3.5 gallon fuel tank. We bought that off the shelf, but then we made this cradle that holds that tank. And the reason that we're using this tank and we're not relying on the wings entirely is we, we need the wings connected to the fuselage to sit in the plane and to, to do that engine startup. And those wings are what normally hold the fuel. They're capable of holding 77 gallons, but we know we're gonna to have to take that wing on and off for painting the aircraft and for trailering the aircraft to its final flight test location. We want to learn as much as we can at this location right here through the engine startup and through some of that initial taxi testing. We don't want to go through the pain of draining the system in the wings. So that's what we're using this tank for. So a couple key parts of this tank is we got this fuel supply line on the bottom and that's going to run up to our fuel shutoff valve. We want to be able to shut off, the, shut off that fuel just in case of any emergency. So you can control that like that right there. And then from here, the supply line will run to a little filter before it gets to our dual fuel pump setup. So these are positioned in parallel and these are what pull fuel to the engine or push fuel to the engine. And we only need one pump at a time, but in case one of the pump fails, the other one can kick in. So it's just a redundancy thing. So that's our fuel pumps. The engine is going to be pulling in more fuel than it needs and it's going to kick back what it doesn't and that's going to come into this line right here and then to keep our system from over pressurizing we have a, a fuel vent line right here next steps for this will be installing our tubing and our fittings and then getting that hooked up to the engine i think i failed to mention why this cradle is shaped the way it is and this is going to sit in the co-pilot seat and it's going to match the profile of the seat back and the seat bottom so it's going to nest really nice in there and keep this thing from jostling around so that's the fuel test system hardware kind of in a nutshell and i'm looking forward to sharing with you guys once we get this thing all hooked up all right everyone i'm sure you get the idea that we've been working on a whole bunch of little tasks feeding into the first engine start i'm sure you're wondering what do we have left to do to answer that, I have the whiteboard here. We've got written down engine start tasks. There's a whole bunch of little things we need to do. We're gonna break that up into structures and systems. I won't talk through every little task we have remaining, but I think there are pretty obvious tasks that need to be done structurally. So for example, the engine mount needs to be working, landing gear needs to be complete and in the down lock position. We have to have the wing attached to the fuselage just so that we can uh, sit in the aircraft. You actually sit on the wing when you're in the airplane and all the hardware needs to be installed with the right nuts and bolts, torque properly. We're actually pretty good on this. I would say this is like 99% there. We're mostly checking and verifying with the structures items. Systems are a little bit uh, less close to completion. We'll call that like 90%. So the fuel system needs to be working, electrical system needs to be working, and I also have written down other. There are other tasks which you could maybe debate are essential or not essential to fire up the engine. We're erring more on the side of caution, trying to get as much done as possible before we start the engine. For example, canopy. We want to have the canopy installed so that we can close that before firing up the engine. There's lots of these little tasks. They don't really fit well into a nice milestone type video. Uh, that's why this video is kind of a bunch of random tasks. The next video that we release might be similar to that, but we want to show what this looks like, uh, building an airplane, taking it through development and testing. So I think we'll wrap up the video there. Thanks for watching guys, we'll catch you next time. So you made it to the end, which means that you're interested in the secret project. What we've been working on in the background is setting up a new shop. I'm actually standing in front of it right now. We're not quite ready to show it yet. We're finishing out the build out on it. So that's gonna be in an upcoming video. We're gonna give a full tour of the new shop. Uh, it's a little bit old news if you're a true fan. We've shown some of this uh, behind the scenes, but we'll do the full tour for the public pretty soon. Stay tuned.